Welcome to the Queer Network, where we like to be real queer. And there's no more words to say. So let's just start the episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Queer Network. My name is Justin Gerhardt, and this is my co-creator, Eddie Fritz. Guys, we're here. We're in Australia. I'm in Australia. You are staying with someone who is from your past yes deep pretty deep in my past actually like a long time ago past, right um <clears throat> there is a story there which we may or may not get into we'll just see how it goes yeah. but you're actually staying with him so um yeah we decide to have him on exactly uh, we talked about having guests and so we were like well this could be a great first Yes, and he was so willing and just felt easy. And as usual, we really have no idea what we're going to talk about, but it's our first guest. And so um, let's let's have him on. Welcome to the Queer Network Queer Talk, Michael. Great to be here. Hey. So we know uh we just had a little talk about uh world pride and where justin is and he's staying at your place justin and i connected over 10 years ago when i was doing a show with his then partner called legally blonde so that i was in the states for that show and that's how we connected but i'm originally from sydney yeah when i went to see him in person for the first time which If y'all want to watch that story, it's a documentary. We'll put it in the description. Um, It was in Paris, which he, Michael was working at the Moulin Rouge for how many years? Four or not even? No, like two and a half years. Uh Yeah. And then Michael moved back to Australia kind of right before the pandemic? No, because of COVID. Right. So a couple months after it hit, yeah. Yeah and has been back ever since. And we've always, when, when we, we when we reconnected during the pandemic, um, we'd always talked about somehow connecting in person again, and then started talking about times. <clears throat> we were almost gonna do it in LA, like in January when you were visiting other friends, but then yeah. World Pride was just an obvious choice. And now yes. we're here. So this time, it wasn't a surprise. This time we planned it out, baby. <laughs> no surprises here. <laughs> it didn't go as planned the first time. We were diff- We were in different places in our lives. Um, but like I was, Eddie was just asking, like, how has it been to see you? And I was like, it's as if Paris didn't happen, but at the same time, Paris informs the connection. Do you know what I mean? It's also like when we went to the beach the other day and you said this, it's kind of like a way of healing the past as well, even though, I mean, we have healed that and we've spoken about that at length, but at the same time it was, yeah, it's, it's just quite natural. Yeah. Which it always was even before Paris, which is why when Paris happened and we, we didn't quite have the tools to deal with that moment at the time, and I really, this is actually really, really wanted to talk about in connection to this is just like what time does to heal things, um, which you can't necessarily rush, you know, like we, we both had to let go of something in order to like find our way back. And I actually kind of was wondering if you wouldn't mind sharing how you like, like when you found the card when you were at home and like that like so that in life sometimes we have these moments where there's like a a little nudge and you either follow it or you don't follow it and neither is right or wrong but it definitely leads you somewhere yeah it was like we discussed the other day I had moved back from Paris I was back at my family's home and I was packing up all of my stuff to Uh, some stuff that I had had in storage there for a long time, including a box of birthday cards and just various cards that I had been gifted over the years. And I was reading through them and getting rid of lots of stuff at the same time and uh, found the card and read it. And just there was no question in my mind straight away. I took a photo of it and sent it to you. And I said, 
I can't remember exactly what the text said, but I, it was along the lines of, hey, I just found this and, uh, you know, I wanted to reach out and reconnect and, and sort of start afresh per se. Yeah. yeah. And it just, what it reminded me of was I was like, oh, we, we, we had this friendship that was so virtual, but it, in essence, it felt so natural and normal and just as if we were like college friends that had you know just not been in the same place for a really long time and when you sent the card I was like that's what we that's that was like the essence of our friendship like that we would send handwritten cards to each other even like across the world so yeah it reminded me too that like there was something really special there and I'm that's why I was like yeah why of course I want to of course, I want to reconnect with you, Michael. I don't know if you know that, like, if you've seen any of our shows, but a lot of times we have no idea what we're going to talk about, and then it just sort of flows into something, and then we have this discussion. And and uh, when I talked to Justin earlier, I said, "So, what are we going to talk about? Like, what's the?" Because I always like to have some sort of in our talk, some sort of for some sort of lesson or some sort of. Um, yeah, I guess I guess lesson is, is the right like word. Nugget. Something to take home with you. Yeah, something to take home, something to, you know, that maybe people are struggling with or whatever. And so when I thought about this situation, and of course Justin said it, it was about healing. And you know, in life, I think that sometimes we get to heal things and sometimes we don't. And mm-hmm. sometimes we get closure and sometimes we don't. And I'm lately really big on, and I have been for a long time, but on the universe and what it does and what it's, what it sends us. And, you know, I had a particularly hard weekend and, and I just, I always bring myself back to the universe. And if it's, if it's meant to be, I know it's, it's a cliche thing. It's easy to say, but if it's meant to be, it's going to happen. You know, sometimes we have to give it a nudge. And I think when you sent that to Justin, I mean, Justin and I, we yeah. talk about everything and I, he was, I was like, what? Like he was, he was surprised pleasantly, but surprised. And, you know, I've had situations with people and with friends where, you know, I thought the friendship was over and then, and then yeah. circumstances somehow it comes back. And it's because these things happen because there is just, we, we still have something to learn, from, you know, yeah. it could be good. It could be bad, but, but I think it's it's just amazing how this situation has happened and, and, and how you guys are now from what wasn't the most pleasant experience for, well, for both of you. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I'm a huge believer and a huge practicer of the universe and the universe having my back as well and listening to the universe and listening to uh the beautiful sort of lessons that it gives you and absolutely that was one of them and that's why I went into that box of cards and pulled out that card and read every one of them as well um and and got that nudge and followed it and for instance in this past week as well um you know the universe put something so unexpectedly beautiful in my lap in the form of a partner and and you know a very very unexpected love that has blossomed and um and you know making choices to then either lean into that and 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 see where where it's going to go and what else the universe has in store or go you know what it had its moment and when two people uh make choices like Justin and I have and and whatnot it's um that that reflect where each other are at and and if those choices are uh, uh, serendipitous and and we're both listening to the universe and both you know walking that path of of who knows what then you know beautiful things can happen and like I mentioned this this beautiful man that I met recently uh, we both made choices to lean into what was unexpected and what the universe has delivered. And we both agreed that we had been manifesting each other for a very long time. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, thanks universe. Finally, you delivered. (laughs) 
I often like to quote uh, Rumi, who's a, do you know who Rumi is, Michael? So quote from him, he says, um, what you are seeking is seeking you or whom you are seeking is seeking you. Mm -hmm. And you basically just said that, that you, you manifested that and that person, um, it could be a person, it could be a situation, but in this case, that, that person was seeking you as you were seeking them you didn't know it. And now you've come together. And in the most unexpected way and in the most unexpected of circumstances, in the most unexpected, um, unexpectedly easy as well. There was zero force. There was zero effort in the sense of it, 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 nothing was hard. Everything just flowed. And that was that is what the universe had in store. It just yeah. flowed. And that's Which when you know it's right, when it just... When it's unexpected, when it flows, when you just trust and you let go. And, you know, there's another there's another saying that he says, uh, when you walk out on the way, the way appears, you know. Mm. So, so that is that is in essence, like just to circle this back and, and bring one more point in. That is how it felt when we first connected. It was so easy. It was almost ridiculously easy. I was like, we've known each other in another life because we shouldn't know each other this well having spent no time in person and like, yeah, there's just so many things. And now we reminisce about some of those old moments that we had, like you driving in your car and me walking home from Joey restaurant and like just all the little things we used to do. But there's one moment in this whole thing that I feel is a part of when you get like when that unexpected, when that unexpected moment arrives of this thing that you've manifested, I think part of when it happens because I want to give like people out there like, well, how do you, so you're, I, I feel like you're manifesting all the time and you are, but I think it's when you let go of the timeline and you honestly just like live so much more in the present moment, reaching for joys, reaching for the little joys of every day that you start letting go of the expectations of when those things you want are going to happen. Because that expectation, I think, puts this like unnecessary pressure on the universe to deliver at a specific time. Cause your mind is like, I want this now because I want that relationship. Now I want that money. Now I want that. whatever it is you don't have that you want, you want it now, but in the wanting of it now, it sort of creates this, I think a little bit of chaos as opposed to just let letting your life live your life, live your live each day. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's going to feel this thing will arrive because you weren't putting pressure for it to arrive on a specific timeline. You let it arrive and let the universe surprise you, like let the universe gift this thing to you that you've been creating in your mind, in your actions. And 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 I just think that that is the joy of the experience part of the joy of the experience yes it's the timing but also there are experiences and things you have to go through before that happens yeah you know before you can uh, before that person or that situation comes into your life you you need to be you need to be ready for it and we don't necessarily know what what that means but the universe does the universe knows what you need and it's mm -hmm. like, okay, I haven't met that person. I mean, uh, Michael doesn't know anything about me, but I, I've been single most of my life. And um, yeah, if I just keep waiting around, I kept waiting around for that person to come, then Jesus, you know? So, but there are many experience that I've, experiences that I've had along the way. And, and that's what the experiences I've needed to have. So just for people out there, it's like, yeah, you know, again, it's it's hard to say if it's meant to be, it's going to happen because people are like, well, you know, fuck that. Like, I want it to happen. But uh, yeah, it is kind of what it is. I think I think that also harks back to the way society is going in that now in society, we can get everything at the drop of a hat. You have companies like Amazon Prime and you can get something delivered to your door within a couple of hours. So we live in a society nowadays where if we want something, we get it and we get it immediately. And if we don't get it immediately, then we're pissed. But going, going back to something actually Justin and I talked about 
many, 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 many years ago, back when we first connected and something that I still to this day, and even when we weren't really connected and talking, um, something that I refer referenced back. And so I always spoke about Justin and this was in terms of my mantra and we had very similar views on this. And that was that I have to be truly happy alone to be able to bring any sort of happiness to somebody else, being my family, my friends, a partner, but even just a random person on the street that I might have an interaction with. If I'm not solid and happy, absolutely alone in this world, then I'm never going to be able to bring any joy to anybody else. And I think personally, like, you know, when, when we met in Paris and whatnot, I was not happy then I was not good I was not settled now in that time of growth I really have developed such a deeper understanding of who I am and I've done so much more work to understand myself physically spiritually that I am in a great place now and then that being in such a good place I wasn't looking at all for a relationship I wasn't looking for somebody to feel any part of my life because I am so happy and solid in myself that now the universe has gone okay now you're ready okay so you are saying that you need to be and we've said it before as well you need to be happy with yourself you need to be happy being alone so my question to you is how did you get there a lot of self-reflection um I was also in an unhealthy relationship where I was physically abused um, so, you know, did a lot of therapy after that, a lot of journaling, but I've got a yoga practice of 17 years. And throughout that time, I also did my yoga teacher training. So really heavily relying on a lot of those old thousands and thousands and thousands of year old philosophies from the yoga teachings. Um, and then just discussions and, and discussions with myself, discussions with my dearest, my chosen family. Um, I also am very spiritual. So connecting with my spiritual community and, and having those just uh, beautiful relationships which are based on energetic experiences and energetic exchanges between other humans where we're just bouncing off of each other and, 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 and in awe of the universe um it all sounds it all sounds quite woo woo really but it's it's that's my reality and that's um those a lot of those different things are what have worked for me uh yeah so you know grieving grieving who i was grieving grieving parts of relationships that i thought were okay and then realizing no i actually was uh i was I was trying too hard. I was trying for something that ultimately would would never have served me. And and there were there was something that I obviously needed to learn from that because if I look back now, those people and their actions are things that I would never accept. Yet I was so caught up in the moment that I allowed them to continue and then eventually was hurt and had to rebuild myself from that so grieving that person i was but also not being afraid of change and i think so many people in the world nowadays are comfortable they they sit in their comfort i like to sit in discomfort and i like to be challenged and i like to to yeah um that's that's where i feel like i grow the most is when i'm being sitting in discomfort and being challenged to add to that, it's like, and being, listening, watching and listening to the signs that the universe gives you. Because, you know, I've always said that first it sends you like, you know, little pebbles of sand that hit you. And then it starts, you know, then you get pebbles and then you get rocks and then you get the fucking boulders. It's like, okay, you're not getting it. So we're just going to send you something really big, which kind of happened to me on the weekend. But that's also very important is to exactly what you said, sit in discomfort, but, but pay attention, pay attention to what the universe is sending you because it's helping you. It's, it's about listening for sure. And it's about listening to your body, your soul, your mind, everything, but 
so so many people nowadays are um, kind of set apart from their body. They don't actually just listen to what they need. They they think that they need all of this money and and wealth to be able to be successful and to have a a, a healthy relationship, but if they actually really listen to themselves, they probably need a lot less than what they think it, it, they do need to be wealthy. I, I don't need a lot to, to feel like I have a life full of wealth. And I do. I have a life full of wealth. And that is in my connections to my chosen family and to people and, and to this world and the universe. And and listening into that and and going out into nature and just spending the day barefoot and with my feet in the dirt and and not having this mobile phone that we all are attached to nowadays and 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 things like that just disconnecting to reconnect with myself but also the universe which is the hot topic we've talked a lot about on this podcast or in this on queer talk about what it means to like tune in to yourself what it means mm. to go inward. And I think that it becomes this like, what the fuck do you mean go inward? Like, and especially for somebody who is listening that doesn't have a lot of experience even with any sort of therapy or any sort of self-reflection because maybe maybe that just hasn't crossed their path yet. But but essentially the, some of the things that you've described, the journaling, the grieving, the like allowing yourself to, to deepen those friendships with people that you trust to to reflect with them too. Nature, walking in this in the dirt that we come from. We are of nature, but we have so many things in our lives like technology that take us away from nature. When in fact, I think we we could we can have healthy relationships with technology. We we can use it to our advantage and then also know because we go inward, because we we're listening to our body when it's time to turn it off. In the same way that you go to bed every night, you turn your body off, your conscious mind goes to sleep and your unconscious mind and your body take over and everything is rejuvenated. And once again, you are reborn into a new day. We can do the same with technology if we choose, but part of that choice is understanding why you would choose that. What is it about these moments when you go and dive into the ocean or put your feet on the sand or all these, these, these simple things that do bring you back to a connection that is inside your body. And then you can, then you can listen differently to the universe because the, I mean, honestly, I didn't know this was going to go here, but like, and this feels very woo woo, but like, it is, the universe is inside you. I have to um, agree and disagree with what you just said in the, in the sense of people can choose to uh, disconnect from social media and, and things uh-huh. like that because I, I read a book a few months ago by Johan Hari called Stolen Focus. Have either of you read it? No. no. So, and for anyone watching this, it's such an incredible piece of work um and johan did a lot of research and he actually traveled to rhode island and spent three months completely off grid zero zero wi-fi no cell service nothing and in that three months it changed his life and i he he made a very very made a very deep and bold choice which is part of your point people can choose to do it but he also also, he also highlights and categorizes the fact that there are huge companies out there now who are paying a lot of money to steal people's focus. So mm-hmm. it's an addiction and people are addicted to seeing the little love heart button on an Instagram post, the like button on a Facebook post. People, yep. people need that validation. So if they lose that validation, because they're unhappy with who they are. They're not centered. They're not listening to their body. They're not listening to the universe. And they cannot do that because of all of these ulterior and and exterior circumstances that they don't have the choice to remove themselves from that. So that's where I agree with you. People do have the choice, but also society is going in a way and being pushed in a way by these 
huge uh, international companies that they are ensuring that people are addicted and they do not have a choice to turn off their phone, to deactivate their Facebook. Yep. I'm very concerned about where it's going and I'm very concerned about younger people. You know, like it's, that's the, that's the generation, the kids that are like, you know, 10, 12 teenagers, like they know, they don't, even people in their twenties, they don't know the world without social media. And yeah. it's, I mean, it's, it's become a real problem. I mean, what you said about the likes and about, uh, I mean, kids are, 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 are killing themselves, you know, over that. And so it is a really, really big concern. Yeah. I remember and, reading it. I remember reading an article, uh, it was at least 10 years ago now, and iPads were brand new, things like that. And uh, there was a three-year-old child who thought that their finger was broken. Their finger wasn't working anymore because they saw a photo of Beyonce in a magazine and they were trying to tap it and trying to trying to make her bigger. Uh-huh. And they actually started crying, thinking that they were broken because the magazine wasn't zooming in. Because yeah. all they grew up with from a very young age and parents putting an iPad in front of their child from day dot to quiet them, yeah. to stop them, to stop them having emotions, yep. to distract them. And that's the thing. It's stolen focus. It's heartbreaking to me. And... I don't know if Justin's told you, but I actually years ago chose to remove myself from completely from social media. Um, and it was one of the best choices I ever made because that allowed me to be more present with myself, but also with the people I choose to interact with. And as I said, my chosen family. And yeah. it has deepened every every connection in my life, being my connection to the universe, myself, to to my loved ones. And I had that choice and I made the choice very quickly and just did it. I didn't make I didn't make any announcement. I didn't say, oh, I'm deleting it in a month and here's my number, yada, yada, yada. I just did it. And and the people who mattered or, you know, could still contact me and connect it with me. I think people get afraid that if they lose this technology, well, how will I connect with the world? How will I, how will I communicate with everyone? It's like, well, there's so many ways. But, but, and, and uh, Michael alluded to this. And again, we've talked about it before. I think even more than that, yes, how am I going to do that? But then they also think, well, how am I going to get validated? How, that how am I, how am I going to know that I'm, that, that I'm worthy, that I'm okay, that I matter. If, if, if I'm not putting stuff out there and people aren't responding to it, I'm lost. Yep. Cause that is the way people get validated. I mean, right. It's, it's Absolutely. literally this virtual world has become so much. It's not just like this far off thing. Like, Oh, you log on to Instagram. And you're like, cool. It's like this thing's happened. No, it's actually just, it's parallel to real life now. People spend just as much time in this physical world that we think is physical as they do in the portal that is this device. They spend probably, actually some people spend more time inside the world. But, which, but, but let's also say there are some people out there who are doing good through social media. You know, I also was thinking about that too. Like the fact that we the connections that can be made globally, the interconnectedness of the globe now. And I mean, speaking from our queer community, like we would not be, we would not have progressed in the same way if we, we, if we still just had newspapers, like in terms of how media is passed, in terms of how communication has developed. Like, yes, the world is still, a lot of fucked up things are happening, but we also have, made so much progress because somebody that lives in the middle of nowhere can can see something online and know that they're not alone there's the counter to that as well though justin where people have all of these followers and things like that and they post something and they don't get a single like Mm -hmm. and so then they feel 
and, and even deeper loneliness and sadness. So it, 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 it has it has this polar, there's kind of, in my opinion, there's not really an in-between. There's uh, one end and there's the other. Yeah. There's, there's that mega kind of, yes, people feel validated. Oh, I'm living my best life, blah, blah, blah. But they're also only putting out what, what they think people want to see. They're not yep. showing the worst parts of their lives. They're showing a very, 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 um, highlighted heightened version of their reality yep. and then you see the people on the other end of the scale who try to maybe mimic that or even just are being themselves but they then can feel and even those people who had the hundreds of thousands of followers i i know some of those people they still feel so desperately lonely and mm. and it's because they're, they're not actually getting true connection yep it's 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 still those major global companies that are running this world, this capitalist world, that are showing you know are stealing your focus, drawing you in, and making you feel lonely. Then they're giving you targeted advertisements for the you know antidepressants and and putting more money in the major pharmaceutical companies. They're you know um, then giving you targeted advertisement for. Uh, Gay Ski Week to, to go and connect where you then will go and sit on your phone and, and not actually connect with people. <laughs> so it's such a loop. My, can I, yeah. can I say that to, about connection, Michael, is, is also that when you said that people are, you know, have hundreds of thousands of followers and they're still lonely or still not happy because this goes back to what you said, because they're not connected with themselves. They think they haven't figured out how to connect with themselves and how to be happy with themselves. Because if you are, then yeah, hey, that's great that I get all these followers and I get all this thing, but I don't need it. I think a lot of people post because they they want attention, and half yeah. the time, even even sometimes with your stuff, Justin, like I I don't I don't uh, you know we have this incredible relationship, but it's like who cares. You know, I care because you're my friend because I, I I know what you're doing. But I mean, I talk to you all the time. But so many times people post shit, and I just I just want to I just want to comment and say, who gives a shit? Oh, I have to ask myself sometimes, like when I'm posting something, and it's certainly I've had. There's been ebbs and flows to this journey with social media personally, where even when building the gay men channel, like there's an aspect of it underneath that you're like, oh, I hope this takes off. I hope, I hope, but at the core of why I hope it takes off is because I want to spread more love, more joy, more expansion into the universe by showing that we as gay men, queer men, people are so much more than just the stereotypes that people think we are like even this podcast has been an exploration of that um but and that's i think different. That, that's different oh. than personal that's different than personal though but uh, but so on a personal level i'm sharing that this justin this is who justin is and like at the same time i understand that people will take what they want from it like i i can only be myself and what people receive is also on them where they're at and what they're willing to hear. And I have to just accept that people will judge me for sure. Like people won't understand. And I've had to let go of that trying to explain myself. And I think that sometimes is one of the hooks of social media is that even when people are like trying to do good, then they have to try to explain themselves. And then you are now caught in the web. Where you really, in order for it to work, you really have to like hands off, post whatever you want to post that makes, that brings you joy. And if somebody relates to it, great. But also, if they don't, they don't. As long as you have that attitude and as long as you don't do it because you need something from it. That's what I say. I'm sorry, Michael. What was your question? No, don't be. I've also, I've actually got two questions. <laughs> so Hang on. Valerie. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Michael, my mom is my mom is 95 and she lives on her own and she's amazing. And we FaceTime every day. And so uh, but I did tell her we're having this 
anyway. So also, we've never done this on the pod. Yeah, we've never done this on the podcast, but I just want to shout out to Valerie, Mrs. Fritz, because she also has her own YouTube channel. And if y'all want to learn how to cook some amazing, amazing things that like, you know, there's no recipe book. Well, there actually is now. But before this YouTube channel, there was no recipe book for some of the things that she made, because that's just like orally been passed on tradition wise through the family. Um, so we'll put the link in the description to watch cooking with Oma because she's, you know, had she been born at a different time, she would have had her own cooking show on national television. She's a, she's a born she's actor. A that's for sure. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry for that. Sorry for that interruption. Yes. Um, Back to your scheduled broadcast. Yes. Um, yeah. Everyone, you know, people are turning to virtual reality to escape the reality that humanity has created. People are turning to Facebook, to Instagram, to all of the, you know, video games to escape the reality that they live in because they don't want to deal with it. So they are disconnected from themselves, therefore not connected to the rest of the planet, to the universe, to the people around them. Um, and so that is being, that is being, in my opinion, pushed by the society, by the companies that run the planet. And they do not care about the planet. They do not care about the people. They do not connect, care about you as an individual. For instance, you know, the big oil giants of the world that recorded their highest profits in, the, in, in history in the last couple of years while society suffered under the, you know, an inflation and all of the highest um, fuel prices to to pick up your car to to take your kids to school to all of those different things Th that these companies that are running the world and and putting us on a path where we are even more disconnected from each other even though we have social media connecting us mm -hmm. and and these devices mm -hmm. it's just this, this these contradictory sort of ideals and again these are all my opinion um but I think that I think that if everybody made a choice to deactivate their social medias in one day and everybody on the planet made a choice to do that, these companies running the world would know would not know what to do. Then yeah, they, they would, would lose obsolete. Huh? It'd be completely obsolete. Yeah, because they would they would they would lose their they would lose their control. And like you like you said before. The people in power who are supposed to be there helping society, they're not helping us. They're controlling no. us. Yeah. And if, if humanity came to a decision to make a choice to stand up for ourselves, to stand up for, you know, the planet, freedom, connection, all of these things, we could actually go back to a really simpler time. And like throughout COVID and the pandemic, all of these lockdowns and stuff, people were actually having, oh, you know, two people or five people sitting in a park, socially distanced, and they were actually just connecting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people survived. Yeah. People survived. And, yes, we had to use social media and FaceTime and all of this great technology to connect. I'm now using FaceTime to connect with a partner overseas, all of that. So, yes, these there are good technologies, but... I also do believe that they are the absolute devil and they are ruining society, that they are ruining the way we can connect with people because people are losing social skills. People no oh, longer yeah. have the social skills to say, even, even in a text message, hi, how are you? They just go straight to the point of what they want. Yep. They no longer care about the other person. It's what they want and what they can get from you. And that's exactly what society is turning into. My wrap up of this, because what I want to leave people is not that this doom and gloom, like the world is terrible and we're going to, we're all going to fall off a cliff soon. We, we aren't going to go back. We can't go back. It's not possible. This exists. So how do we move forward? That's so, just an open question because everybody needs to at home listening, ask themselves that question personally, micro, bring it down to yourself. How are you going to move forward? 
And let me give you a really good example and an and answer to that question. When I was, uh, I, I can't remember when it was, let's say over the, sometime over the last year, I was in Toronto. I was in a restaurant, went with my mother, went to Swiss Chalet. There was a family, uh, husband and wife, <laughs> kids were probably, oh, I don't know, 12, a couple of teenagers, all four of them were at their table on their phones, texting. They weren't talking to each other. What the fuck? Yep. So in answer to your question, it, it, I think it, it has to be up to, and you talked earlier about, you know, we are a product of how we were brought up, how, you know, of our childhood. Like, stop that shit. Talk, you know, put away the phones and talk. So that would be, that's a start for me, Michael. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you, Michael, the last word. Then I'm going to wrap this up. I'll start with, I was, I was thinking back to, again, Johan Hari's book, Stolen Focus. And he also talks about a, a young boy in, I think it was Long Island, um, who he was going out to this um, forest near his home. And in the forest, he and his friends had no cell service. So he and his friends would spend the whole day there because their mums could not ring them and see how, you know, and check in on them. And right. what happened in that forest was they built forts, they built things, their creativity, this creativity that had been been uh, dampened by social yep. media, by their parents overbearing, checking in on them, etc., yep. came alive. So it went back to a simpler time where they were, he, he, he then no longer, um, you know, was feeling depressed and anxious and all these things that children now are on antidepressants because of all of this media etc so we are creating this this tumbleweed of 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 issues societal issues which are affecting our children which mm -hmm. are affecting humanity in a way where we're no longer able to make those choices to disconnect to have that family of four at a dining table put down their phones and sit there. Because if they did that, they probably would just sit there in silence because they have nothing to talk about. Yeah. And, at, so, and at first, if, the, if, if they were gonna make a choice to let's say, let's say one of them in that family was like, it's time, we need to change this. And they say, phone's in the car, nobody's allowed to take their phones in. There will be a moment in that scenario where it's gonna be fucking awkward for a little while because we are adapting all the time as humanity and they would figure it out eventually, but it would require a, a level of discipline that so few have. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it with this. Johan also, I can't remember the word, but Johan also talks about the fact that we have come so far evolutionary, evolutionarily speaking, we're at actually at a, at a, at a tipping point and a cusp where we are doing the opposite of evolving. We are actually going backwards. Ooh, that's really good. So if if anybody is listening to this and anybody, you know, hears what I'm saying and hears the messages of everything that we've spoken about and, and the incredible Johan Hari is just make choices that allow you to keep progressing and allow you to reconnect with yourself, yeah. allow you to reconnect with the people that you love in the physical space in the energetic space allow you to reconnect with the universe leave the screens behind leave this technology which is so you know important and evolutionary because it's not it's yeah. only making us go backwards we are doing the opposite of evolving and you're doing yourself a disservice by spending your time in your phone in your playstation in all of these things Get outside, feel the, feel the sand, the dirt between your toes. Get dirty. Oh, my yeah. God, get dirty. Get dirty. <laughs> oh. like, yeah. Well, Michael, that was a beautiful way to wrap it up. I, I want to thank you for, for being our first guest on um, this new version of Cool Talk. Yeah. I, can't, I can't imagine a better first guest and first conversation on everything we talked about i i i'm uh, you know i can think i can speak for justin we're honored to have you on um 
Thank you for your insight. Um, it's Thank certainly you for your honesty. What's that, Justin? Thank you for your honesty. Like I'm, I'm, oh, and nice. I just have to say on a personal note, I'm so glad that I get to go hug you after this and not live <laughs> a thousand miles away. So that's special. Like me. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm giving you a virtual hug because um, I'm, I, I really yeah. love love this connection with you and um you know come back anytime hopefully let's let's have you on again because um yeah. it, it's so good and and it, Justin and i sort of like it just we had this light bulb moment a couple of weeks ago it's like well we keep asking we put put it out there at the end of the episode like anybody who wants to come on come on and like you know comment or talk about things and then we were all of a sudden like well shit why don't we just have our friends on why don't we have people that we know and have a conversation and this just proves that that's what we need to do because we, you know, Justin and I have our perspective and our opinions on things, but you certainly gave a, a very, um, in some things that you said, very different outlook and opinion on what we would have had. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I, and I think that's, that's amazing. So that's uh, Justin, do you want to say anything else? And then we'll let Michael say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. I just like, I just think, what a beautiful full circle moment to to get to to have this with you michael and share it and and exactly what eddie said you brought a a differentiated perspective and i think that differentiation is what we're here to bring individually to the conversation and and i will think about things differently now thank you and i think that's part of the beauty of humanity but also, again, taking it back to, to, to these companies that are controlling the world, they are making everybody have the same singular perspective. Exactly. So it's how can we give the power back to the individuals yeah. and allow them to actually have a choice and a thought and not be these zombies who are, who, who are not in the moment because they have to share something on social media. Yeah. So how can we, how can we encourage humanity to, to be human, to mm -hmm. be flawed, to be imperfect and to, yeah. to, to falter, to, to, to fall and pick themselves back up and, and connect with the other people around them in picking up their friend, their loved one, things like that. How can we, how can we, you know, change that? And I would, you know, love to have you back and let's have that discussion. Tune in for part two. <laughs> so for now, we're going to say goodbye. Thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. And it uh, was wonderful to uh, talk to Justin in Sydney and yes. to, meet, to meet you, Michael. And you guys enjoy the rest of uh, World Pride. Well, thank and you, thank Michael, you. for having this discussion Look. with us. Love and light to everybody out there watching and go and connect with your loved ones in person. Yes. yes. Amen to that. Right. Beautiful way to I'll end leave. it. Bye, everybody. Right. Keep it Thank queer, y'all. Keep it queer. Wow. Wow. Again. 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 And again and again and again and again and again. We just followed the nudge. I didn't know. I didn't see that coming. But that literally was like a wrap up of everything we've sort of been talking about that needed sort of a through line. Like we, it just really, even in this whole podcast, 14 episodes, there was layers of every single thing that we've talked about before that were were woven into this one. You know, we've we've been doing this a long time and we tried so hard. <laughs> we tried so hard and all this has been like such a I don't know if healing is the right word but it's been like but I guess maybe it has been healing maybe it's healing the part of us that was really trying to make this something as opposed to us just getting to exist in it we didn't do this nope the universe did it we listened yep. and we connected yep. and then let go. let go let go and trust <laughs>